Good afternoon. This is Tony Chernowski, manager of the Practical Investor LLC. Today is July the 14th, 2010, and the topic for the day is, Can the Flash Crash Happen Again? This video is meant for instruction and entertainment purposes only. This is not a solicitation to buy or sell any security. A purchase or sale of a security may result in a loss of principal. Please consult it with, a, with an expert advisor who may explain the risks of any investment you may consider. You cannot invest directly in an index. Well, good afternoon, and I'd like to just make another appearance to tell you that we're at a critical point in the market again. Um, I would like to uh, review a little bit of what's happened over the last couple months, as if anybody needs review. But I'm going to do it from the perspective of the broadening formation that I've been discussing for the last several months. So without further ado, let's go right to the charts and we'll start with the Dow and uh, take a review of that and then proceed from there. The first thing I want to point out to you is the flash crash itself. Um, back in April and May, I had been telling my subscribers that the flash crash had a target by the way, I had been making this point that there would be a, a, a what's called a primary cycle low. I had expected it on May the 6th, and my target was about 98.50. Now, the flash crash happened on May the 6th, and it actually got down to 9867. Not too bad. The point is that the um, broadening formation gave me that target. Uh, basically, what it was telling me is that there would be at least a 10% decline out of the top of the very smallest broadening formation at the top of the chart. Um, we are now in uh, actually two larger formations. We've got the uh, largest of all formation going all the way back to the November uh, period, and that has a lower trend line at about 9,000. But very recently, in, in the months of May and June, we formed yet another broadening formation. Uh, we would call that a child formation, if you will. And uh, that uh, has also uh, a lower trend line at about 9,500. Um, I'm also going to review a couple of other things with you here. Um, one of the things is that we have um, what's called the, the death cross, which is uh, where the 50-day moving average crosses the 200-day moving average. You can see that here. In fact, on this chart, the industrials have stopped pretty much at the 200-day moving average, uh, which is at uh, 10,374. And uh, it did make a high of about 10,407 before pulling back. Um, the 50-day moving average is uh, at a lower level at about 10,256. And um, I believe once we recross that, uh, this will be a signal for many traders to, to go short again uh, in the market. Now. Let's talk about what we're looking at here in terms of targeting. Uh, one of the things that everybody has talked about is the head and shoulders pattern at uh, uh, roughly at 97.50 on the Dow. It's at uh, 1,040 on the Standard & Poor's Index. Here on the Dow, we have a minimum target of about 8,250 for the head and shoulders that we've got outlined in black here. Um, I want to point out that that's very, very close to the July low at 8,087. And I wouldn't be surprised, since the head and shoulders pattern is a minimum, that we do um, uh, retest the 8,087 low from July of 2009. Now, I also want to point out that these broadening patterns are not complete yet. Only the very smallest one is done. And we've got several patterns or several targets below that. Um, the blue broadening formation has a target of 7,400. And the red broadening formation has a target of about 6,900. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes all the way down to 6,650, which was the March 2009 low. So these are targets 
here, uh, and let's talk about time frames for a minute. Um, I believe that the 8250 time frame could happen within the next month or so, and uh, I also believe that the lower time frames, the the 7400 to 6900 time frame, um, those targets could uh, come out uh, possibly in the month of August. So. Uh, I'm giving you some broad stroke um, patterns here, and I just want to uh, let you know that uh, uh, this thing is uh, pretty close to being finished. Let's move on to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ 100 has a slightly different broadening formation for the, for the uh, parent formation. Uh, this is called a broadening wedge, whereas the Dow... Uh, is called a broadening, this is called the orthodox broadening top. The red formation is a broadening top because the lower line I is uh, declining and the upper line is um, uh, advancing. Uh, in the NASDAQ, both lines are advancing, but the lower line advancing at a much uh, lower level. What we have here is we also have a... Um, head and shoulders pattern that's in, uh, incorporated into the larger broadening formation and that head and shoulders pattern has a target of about 1500 on the NASDAQ 100. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the uh, red broadening formation, the smaller one that's just come out within the last two months, has a uh, potential target uh, of um, roughly 1,275 to 1,300. So we are talking quite a drop here from the smaller broadening formation. The point that I want to make here is that um, by trying to avoid um, the uh, head and shoulders pattern that, uh, that's been so discussed here, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's been on the front of many analysts uh, uh, sheets here that we're, we're missing out two things. Number one, uh, another broadening formation, which by the way is a crash formation, uh, which means that uh, the flash crash has the ability to happen again on both the NASDAQ and the Dow. And, um, and uh, we are set up for it right now. Uh, if uh, a look at the pattern says that we've met resistance at uh, in this case, at the 50-day moving average for the NASDAQ, uh, right around 1851. And uh, the head and shoulders pattern uh, gets violated again at 1780, roughly, on the uh, NASDAQ 100. So those are the, the uh, levels to look out for. Uh, if you're bullish, I hope certainly on the NASDAQ you're not bullish below 1775 to 1780. So in any event... Uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, uh, give you uh, the, the broad brush strokes of what I see happening on these patterns right now. The broadening formation is a topping pattern, uh, and it's meant uh, also as a crash pattern. Uh, the broadening formation, formation happened uh, quite often in stocks, individual stocks, in 1929. It also happened uh, in the uh, 1974 crash as well. So I uh, just want to be have you be aware of that. And for those of you that are looking for um, a newsletter that can guide you, uh, my proprietary interest is in cycles, uh, but I look at these uh, uh, patterns, uh, trading patterns as well. And uh, for those of you that are interested, you can contact me on my website at www.thepracticalinvestor.com or uh, you can email me directly at tonyc at thepracticalinvestor.com. Uh, this is a very, very good time to stay on top of what's happening in the market. I wish you all well. I hope you succeed in your efforts. Uh, and please do the right thing. Thank you very much.